Our topic today is is legacy systems in part in healthcare, uh, which covers a lot of ground. But once uh, one place we are going to settle on is the topic of unprotected healthcare records, as it's the issue that's surprisingly uh, open and which you know to hear you tell it is acknowledged and also sort of ignored by many healthcare providers. So I want to have you just sort of give us the top down about your report and your findings on the state of healthcare record security right now. Well, the the origins of that report go back almost two years. Mm -hmm. um, when I was reading a story about a, a researcher who had talked about a proof of concept that he was able to manipulate medical imagery so that... Uh, yeah, he could take cancer away from the images or he could make cancer appear on the images, mm, um, wow. which um, if, if you think of um, medical imagery as a part of the medical process, yeah, you, you go for an x-ray, you go for a CT, and then you have your images taken and then they are presented to the, uh, to the doctor to actually sort of derive your treatment. And once that underlying source of information, the image is, uh, itself, is um, lost, is manipulated, then we are in danger. So I was, I was like, hmm, is that uh, how big of an issue is that? I mean, I was, I was going in there with the assumption, okay, yeah, you need to be next to the device, you need to be within the network, you need to have. Um, overcome certain hurdles like firewalls, like whatever. And I was like, hmm, okay, let me, let me check that. So it was, it was actually an evening here in Germany. And I went online and searched for some background and um, was sort of yeah, checking which kind of parameters do I have to look for. And so just about five minutes later, I had a system unprotected, connected to the network. I was able to see the, the, the patient data. I was able to see the images. I was uh, basically, I, I could have downloaded the whole data set and that was about 18,000 studies on that device. And there was no protection at all. There was no encryption, no firewall, no passwords, no multi-factor authentication, a plain server connected to the internet with everything on it. And it, for me, it was shockingly simple to find one. Yeah, that that initial system, which sort of started the whole process, that was a system in the UK. And in in with the details of the data, a, a who is search of the IP address, uh, related SSL certs, I was able to reach out to the administrators to of that system via LinkedIn. And in a matter of days, that system went off the grid. You can imagine that I was curious. Yeah. Yeah, so we started. We started to search. Uh, Shodan is a big help, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and a few months later, at the end of the first round of searching and data collection, um, we had hundreds of systems where, in our data set, where we had access to unprotected access. We had from all over the place, all over the world, every continent except Antarctica. Would be interesting if there is one. Um, <laughs> And the amount of studies we, we've finally had in, in, in our data collection in terms of our statistics, we didn't download anyone, um, were hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions of studies from patients across the globe, billions of images related to them, details, 3D imagery, scary thing. I mean, if, if yeah, think of, of my own hat in a, in a CT, in an MRT, and then someone else is able to actually get your hat out of a medical archive, put it into a 3D printer, and then you can do a passport photo or whatever. I mean, oh, that, yeah. That, yeah I mean, Jesus. Might yeah, not be true, but anyway. You, you also mentioned that you were, that they, using sort of graphic technologies that they'd be able to sort of add or remove cancer as well. I mean, and that's, that's, that's a horrendous thought that you could yeah, change someone's yeah. diagnosis, either like put a scare into them or make them go through chemo for nothing. Or I mean, it's, yeah, I've, I, I, there was 
additional ways of of having access to these devices mm -hmm. some of them were actually so negligent that they were putting these devices not only into the the DICOM protocol with which was my original research they also had these devices connected using a web interface again no password no encryption nothing plus the option to upload files mm -hmm. Well, I left a note on some of the systems like saying, hey, you're open. You're as open as as, as open can be. <laughs> That's a... Yes, it is. So yeah. when, when we published the report, um, the outcry was massive. Yeah. I mean, it, it ended up, for example, in Malaysia that the, the government's health minister uh, uh, actually summoned a, a an urgent meeting to follow up on each single system we found in that country, mm -hmm. which was funny in, in, in terms of reading the newspaper from Malaysia about these meetings. Yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> busy day. <laughs> I have, I was scared by by the by the massive amount of findings. So, I had at the same time we were publishing the, the the report we were also reaching out to the german federal office for information security because these guys are well connected they have their peers in 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 the world the us cert the ncsc in the uk ANSI as the french organization and in most of the countries and there were some 50 plus countries we actually had in our findings they had their connection, they had a peer, so they could help us to give our findings to them to follow up on to. And I was hoping that these authorities in the world would be able to identify the system owners and get the systems away from public view. New episodes of the Cyberwork podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things cyberwork.